In this video, I want to describe to you scapulohumeral rhythm, sometimes called glenohumeral rhythm. That is the pattern of movement at three joints. The sternoclavicular joint, the acromioclavicular joint, and the glenohumeral joint. All three work together to get the arm up over the head in elevation. Since my pieces are flat here, we're going to look at this in the frontal plane or coronal plane uh, with shoulder AB abduction. So what happens is initially, at the very start, all you have is a little bit of glenohumeral motion motion at the GH or glenohumeral joint up to about 20 or 30 degrees of abduction. Beyond that you start to get a little bit of sternoclavicular or SC joint elevation as well. So here you can see I have had some glenohumeral joint abduction but I've also had some sternoclavicular joint elevation. And you can see, in order to get about 90 degrees of shoulder abduction, I have probably about 30 degrees of sternoclavicular elevation here, and probably about 60 degrees of glenohumeral abduction. You can see that because if I take the clavicle back down to a neutral position, I only have about 60 degrees of glenohumeral abduction. Let's put it up about like this again. So in that first 90 degrees of shoulder abduction, about 60 of that comes from glenohumeral abduction, and about 30 of that comes from sternoclavicular elevation. Once we hit about 90, we're pretty close to maxed out on the sternoclavicular elevation. From that point on, we continue to have some glenohumeral abduction. And I apologize, this doesn't look quite right because I have a fixed axis and I you're not seeing the roll and slide arthrokinematics there, but it's good enough to get the uh, scapulohumeral rhythm concepts. So anyway, once we're at our about 90 degrees of shoulder abduction, further shoulder abduction occurs partly because of glenohumeral abduction and partly because of a chromioclavicular right here joint upward rotation. And so you'll see it comes up kind of like that until we finally end up with about 180 degrees or so of shoulder abduction, which consists of 120 degrees at the glenohumeral joint, 30 degrees of upward rotation at the acromioclavicular joint, and 30 degrees of elevation at the sternoclavicular joint. Now I want to show you one more thing here. And so I'm going to actually just take my humerus off and put it aside. And now we have just the uh, scapula and the clavicle. All right, the other thing I wanted to show you here is that we have a little ligament that's outlined in uh, orange here with this orange string between the coracoid process and then the clavicle. And it goes off the coracoid process, which is you know, fairly anterior. You can't really see it in this two-dimensional view, but fairly anterior. And it goes and attaches to the back of the clavicle. The clavicle, as you may know, is, although this is described shown as flat, it's actually S-shaped a little bit. 
Okay, so from the sternum here, it goes back a little bit and then kind of straightens out to hit the AC joint. So here's your AC joint, kind of comes up here, and then it kind of comes forward to meet the SC joint. All right, so this point right here where that coracoclavicular ligament attaches is fairly posterior, and this point here where it attaches to the coracoid process is relatively anterior. What that means is for our scapulohumeral rhythm, once we have gotten our initial, say, 30 degrees of SC elevation, and our humerus would be out at 90 at this point. Then we have the rest coming from our AC joint upward rotation, so it goes like that. But you'll see that AC joint upward rotation puts tension into that coracoclavicular ligament and is going to pull on the back of the clavicle. As it pulls on the back of the clavicle, it's actually going to posteriorly rotate the clavicle. So as far as the clavicle and the scapula goes, with our shoulder scapulohumeral rhythm. Initially, you get SC joint elevation, and then in the second half of the shoulder abduction, you get AC joint upward rotation and SC joint posterior rotation as this coracoclavicular ligament pulls on the back of the clavicle to posteriorly rotate it.